then we're just going to insert the tube. So we're gonna do an insertion of an NG tube for um, nasogastric decompression. And it isn't a skill that you guys need to learn for checkoff, but I want you guys to be familiar with this task because it is part of um, what you guys need to learn. So I'm gonna enter my room, do some hand hygiene. And then I already have raised my bed up. I'm gonna have the patient in an upright position for this procedure. So have them sit up as high as they can. So this um, special tube that I'm going to be inserting is for if they have like a blockage of their intestinal tract and it's not gonna move through when they're really nauseous and they've been throwing up a lot. So I wanna show you that there's different kinds of tubes. So this one here is a feeding tube so this would be inserted the same way, but it's much smaller. And um, this would be used just for feedings. This one here is used um, to remove contents from the stomach. So it's a lot thicker. It has holes along the sides to help remove that excess um, fluid that's gonna build up in the stomach because it's not digesting through. So you wanna have your patient sit upright. You're gonna per perform a procedure that you probably would wanna wear a mask and a gown. I just wanna be able to um, talk so you guys can hear me. The patient um, has a high probability of gagging during this process. So having a chucks pad is a good idea. Maybe having one of those um, emesis basins or a blue bag would be also helpful. So you are going to want this tube to be well lubricated so that it can go easily into your patient. And you wanna know approximately where this, how far in it needs to go. So what we do is we're gonna measure from the the nose, to the ear, to the xiphoid process, which is just where the ribs come together. So when I'm looking at this particular tube, it's gonna be right here. Um, here's my marks, so I, between the 45 and the 50. So that's about where it will exit my patient. Then I'll know that it's down into the stomach. So I'm just gonna lube up my tube so generally your patient is NPO, but during this process, it helps if they're able to swallow. So this is a time that they may be able to swallow because we want that epiglottis to close and go into the esophagus, not down the trachea. So the patient will tip their head forward and then we're just going to insert the tube and you gotta be kind of quick with it and then they are swallowing, and as they're swallowing, this tube is going down. I think my mannequin's not cooperating here. There we go. Okay, and then we're looking at our mark. So I needed to go between my 45 and 50, so I'm just gonna continue to feed it in. 45, and it was about there. Okay, so this is where I want to keep my tube. There, um, this needs to be x-rayed before it's used um, because we wanna make sure that it's in the right position. I'm just going to grab some tape. I'm just gonna get a strip of tape and then I call it making a pair of pants. So you're just gonna take your tape like this and that way it's ready for when you're gonna tape it onto your patient. So I've got my tube in the position that I need it to be. I'm just going to place my tape on the, the bridge of the patient's nose, and then I'm going to wrap the tape over the tubing, 
and I'm gonna tape it back up onto my patient's nose, but I don't want this tube to irritate their nasal opening. So we have to make sure that it's not gonna cause a skin, skin breakdown by being too close to the edge of the nostril. So we just are gonna tape it into place. So I just wanted to show you how to do that procedure. And then this would just connect to suction. To the canister like this. And this usually has a little white and blue end piece as well. And then the stomach contents would come out. When it's a new obstruction, it's usually very dark brown. And then as their stomach starts and their intestines start um, working again, then it lightens up in color. So you, you should generally see that progression. It's been working and we need to give this patient oral medications, but they can't swallow. If they can't swallow orally, we can use the tube if there's an order to administer through the tube. So what we can do is we just pull up some water, about 30 mils of water turn off our machine. Flush some water through. You gotta kinda clamp it off. And then you've got your med cup with your crushed meds. You're gonna pull that up. <laughs> push them through the tubing, and then you just are gonna take some more water. About another ounce, 30 mils, and then flush that through. And then you need to keep the suction off for like 30 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna connect it without turning on the suction. Um, otherwise, if I turn on that suction and I just gave medication, it'll just siphon right back out. Okay, so if we're working with a patient with a gastrostomy tube, we just have to get down here. And then we're going to have a container of water. We are going to have our syringe. And we've got we could do a bolus feed or we could hook them up to a continuous pump um, or gravity feed as well. So because we know that this is located in the stomach itself, it used to be practiced that we would check the pH level and that's not standard practice anymore. So it's a little tricky because that may still be on your NCLEX about checking a pH um, and gastric residual, but that's not typical practice anymore. So I just wanna help you to understand that's an exceptional situation. So when we're doing our checkoff, I don't need you to check the pH level. Okay, this is going right into the stomach. And so um, this has a little cap that when we remove that, that's where we're going to put our um, fluid in. It has a little clamp that's already, it should be clamped closed. So then we just get some water. And again, kind of standard is to do 30 mils. So one ounce of water. And this is clamped. I should have a little towel. Maybe I'll just use this. This might drip, so it's a good idea to have a little absorbent pad. Okay, so then you just open this clamp, instill your water. And then if you have any meds to push in, you would just crush them up, siphon them up into your syringe, push the med, push water, and it's best practice to do one med, water, another med, water, and another med, and water. So you don't wanna just crush all of your stuff up and then push it in at one time. Um, if you have 
um, feeding tube that you need to give. If it's a bolus feeding, you just have to look to make sure you've got the right kind of feeding um, that is ordered for your patient. Check that it's not expired. And then you just wanna shake it really well. And then you also wanna cleanse the top of your can before you pour it. So you can just use a little alcohol swab, clean the top of your can off. And then you could, I'm not really wanting to put this formula in my mannequin. So I'm just gonna open it up, pour it into my container. And then if I have just one can or one and a half cans, you just have to look at your order and make sure that you've got the correct amount of milliliters that you need. So this one is approximately, it's eight fluid ounces or approximately 240 mils. So if I needed one and a half cans, then I would do one and a half cans, but just depends on what your order is. Um, and also it depends on how big your hands are. Some people can't do the full 60 with their hand length. So just pull up what's comfortable for you, but you need to be keeping track of how much you're putting in. So if you do 50, that might be easier to remember. So if you pull it up to 50, connect it, open your clamp, push in 50, clamp it, then we get another 50, and we just continue that until we get all 240 in, whoops, I'm sorry, I don't have my clamp. See what happens if you don't have the, <laughs> the clamp open? It comes right back, it doesn't push. So opening up the clamp, now I can push it in. Now I have tube feeding in my line and it gets really sticky and it can clog your system. So you always have to remember to flush water afterward. So now I'm gonna pull up, once I've administered all of my fluid food, once I've administered all my food, now I'm gonna flush with 30 mils. And I'm just going to instill that and clamp it off. Um, I do wanna show you a couple of other things. So there's this special adapter that's available. So if you have a continuous tube feeding, there's a couple of different styles of bags and um, connector devices. You don't wanna like fill your bag all the way up to the top and then have that food sitting all day long. So put in the amount of food that you need, and then this adapter will allow this to plug in. A lot of the um, feeding tube systems are purple, and they have this screw top. The screw top is threaded in the opposite direction as a syringe that we would use for medication to push an IV, for example. So it's, it's made that way on purpose to prevent errors. So it's a safety feature. If you're having your feeding bag, you are gonna need to flush every four hours with water. Um, you have to look at your order. It might say to flush um, with 240 mils every four hours or something like that. So just look at your order. Um, and part of the reason is we wanna make sure that our patient is getting enough hydration. If we do the formula alone, they can get dehydrated. So we wanna make sure that it's um, adding extra fluid for our patient and also to keep the system open. Um, this particular device is called a Mickey, and I want to show you that if you have a patient who tends to pull at things, this is an option that might work well for them. So it has this extra um, tail on it that can be removed by just twisting this and then pulling this off, and then it's like more like a little button on their skin rather than having a tube. And then this can sometimes be just covered up with another gauze pad um, so that hopefully the patient won't be pulling this out. Um, so if you have a patient that um, has some mental incapacities, that might be a, a benefit for them to have that style. Okay, then you just have to clean up all of your stuff and um, let's see get our patient in a comfortable position. I should take off my gloves. 
perform hand hygiene. All right, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. If you have a client that has a feeding tube, a nasogastric feeding tube, or a nasojejuno feeding tube, so going from the nose into the stomach or down to the jejunum, small intestine, we want to measure before using it. So the way that we measure, or if they have a, a tube like this, we always want to make sure it's not slipping out of position. So every shift, we will measure the length. So what you measure is from the insertion site, so right from where it exits the body. And you're just gonna kind of keep pulling this down. Keeping the tube tight so it's not got any slack so you get a more accurate measurement. And this one looks to be about 74 and a half millimeters. Okay. If you have your feeding tube, you're just measuring from the, the place where it's exiting the body to the end of your device. So same measurement um, direction. So because this tube can kind of pull um, on your patient, you wanna have it a little bit of slack, but what you can do is you can just take a piece of tape and just fold it on itself. And then just use a safety pin, put it through the tape, and then put, put the pin through the gown. That way if something gets pulled, it's not gonna pull out of your patient um, and you have a little slack on there. So. All right, I hope that's helpful.